So that brings us to the last presentation before we have the closing panel discussion. And that is Gabriel Spini. Um, he's a cryptographer at TNO and works on the, and, and I hope I pronounced this well, but please correct me if I'm wrong, the Hapikidio project. Ha, ha, okay, <laughs> well, phew. Um, so the hybrid approach for quantum safe public key infrastructure development for organizations. Uh, that is at least the, uh, what the abbreviation means. And so uh, Gabriel, please come on stage and uh, success with your talk. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me here. Great pleasure for me. Um, before I start a quick note, so indeed I normally say my name as Gabriel, just to simplify uh, things for people. I don't care how you pronounce it, but if you want to write me, don't forget the E at the end of my name, otherwise the email is gonna get lost somewhere. <laughs> okay, let's see. I have to remember the delay. Yeah, so the Hapkido project. Um, first of all, uh, a disclaimer. Uh, you might probably think, okay, this is probably like the Dutch version from the Netherlands, um, from the talk from uh, Sebastian. Uh, yes and no. Uh, this would be not as detailed, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, less technical, so I'm sorry for the people who were looking for more details and more concrete things, but I have two good reasons for that, which I'll explain during the presentation. Uh, and, and I hope it's still gonna be interesting even for people who want the details. Um, so I'm gonna start with, the, say, the project so far, and then later on I'll, I'll explain the plans for the future. The plans for the future. So, well, a couple of words on the project in its own before diving into the different parts of it. Um, so if you have Googled it because you were curious before, you probably found out Hapkido is a Korean martial arts, and I apologize to any Korean speaker in the room or online if I pronounce it in incorrectly. Um, I will say Hapkido. I believe a sort of like Korean version of Aikido. But it stands indeed for a hybrid approach to quantum safe public key infrastructure development for organizations. And its goal is it's, it's, it's a research project, so it doesn't aim to migrate, it aims to study a migration to hybrid quantum safe uh, PKIs in all aspects. So not only covering the technical aspects, and I'm gonna elaborate on that uh, very soon. Because indeed, so we do have a technical track. So we are indeed aiming to provide proof of concepts of a PKI for different sectors and applications and use cases, and to provide a migration roadmap uh, for these uh, topics. But there's more. So we also have a fundamental uh, track, uh, which aims to study the cryptographic security of combiners. I'll get back to this later, but say the idea is that if we want to combine cryptography, which is classical and quantum safe, that's relatively straightforward from a cryptographic point of view for signatures, but it's a bit more complex for CAMs and encryption in general. So that's where we can uh, do a bit more study. And finally, also say a non-technical, non-mathematical, non-cryptographical part, which I call here the policy and management part, which uh, involves things such as a governance study, really detailing about who should make decision, who should wait for who, uh, when do we move uh, to the steps? So really something which don't, doesn't need an IT expert to do, but something that maybe a CEO could use. And then more things to say help us in this migration, which is not technical, but parts as in uh, uh, detailing the social impact assessment of a migration or a lack of migration to quantum safe PKIs and tools to raise the awareness of the urgency of the topic. So this is the reason number one why, we'll, uh, why I will give less details compared to previous presentation because, well, say it's a bit more spread, we're doing a bit more, so I will not be able to go into the deep details of each uh, part. There's also a second reason that I'll detail later on. Okay, to give a couple more, uh, say, general remarks on the project. Um, it's a five years project. We started, well, now one and a half years ago, so we still have quite a, uh, a time to go. Um, it's financed by a public body, so the Dutch Research Council, and it, it is a Dutch uh, organization, uh, but we don't aim to be only relevant for the Netherlands. So that's also why we're here. We actually want to gather input to connect, say, do something which is relevant for hopefully more countries. Um, as per project proposal, we have four uh, sectors to work with, even though right now that's not that crucial, but say that's what we promise to deliver results on. Okay, um, I'm going to introduce the consortium, which also gives me the opportunity to present my own organization, which I will normally keep for a first slide, but for this time, let's keep it to slide number five or so. Um, so I'll start with the cryptographic research that's um, done by CVE or CWI in Amsterdam. It's a research center on mathematics and computer science, and among them are some uh, researchers who submitted can candidates to the NIST uh, competition. For what concerns the policy and management part, so the non-technical track, that's the Delft University of Technology, so forget about the technology part, it's really like policy and management. Uh, but we don't only have research institutes, we also have like 
companies, such as Microsoft, uh, here mostly the, the Dutch branch, uh, in a role of tr a trusted service pro provider and in a role of party that can help us to move to a higher technology readiness level. We have KPN, a very large telecom provider in the Netherlands, it used to be, say, the national uh, telecom providers, which is also a trusted service provider, but also very in interesting for us. They have a test lab where you can actually simulate a very large PKI with a lot, a lot of parties and simulate all sorts of our users and entities in that party. So like a very nice test set, uh, setup to test, say, your new fancy hybrid uh, PKI and see if it actually works and uh, works as well as you expect it. Then we also have onboard Logius, which is essentially the digital government branch of the Dutch government. Uh, they're also the policy authority of the PKI governance of PKI override uh, in Dutch. So essentially the PKI which manages, for instance, uh, rules um, for um, certificates for um, websites of the government and much more related to say government uh, um, uh, related aspects. Then a couple more, Xenio, that's a company that provides essentially digital identification and signing services. Say if you're a financial firm and you want to digitally sign, uh, so say replacing the, the pen and paper signatures on some financial transactions, you can call this company and do that for you, so we'll also provide insights on this topic. And last but not least, organization I'm working for, that's TNO, that's the Dutch Organization for Applied Scientific Research. Uh, if I had to express in one sentence what we do, well, we try to bridge the gap between universities and academic research and, say, the real world or a more applied world. Um, we do two things here, uh, the coordination, even though I have to say I'm not myself a project coordinator, but I did bring with me the project coordinator who's there in the audience. So if you want to talk about uh, this project and you're unable to corner me, you'll be able to corner Ache very soon. And we're also in charge of a technical part of a proof of concept development. Okay, um, so before I get into the uh, details of the different uh, parts uh, that we're gonna, um, they were studying, um, already aware of a focus which we've had so far, which is on document electronic signatures. <coughs> so at least for this first part of a project, probably not for the entire project, not for the whole five years, uh, we're focused on PKIs, which are used to manage the uh, uh, tools or the, the um, digital signature schemes to digitally sign, uh, say, PDF documents. Um, there are more variants than that, so it doesn't have to be PDF documents, but say, think of it as the electronic version of with pen and paper signing a contract. Um, notice that this is quite often legally binding, so if you have a digitally signed, according to some rules, a document that's often, well, you're, uh, you're held to that word, so you, the government will say, okay, you've signed that, so you agree with that. And it's regulating different uh, regulations and laws. For us, which is quite relevant, it's the EIDAS uh, initiative. It's a European framework for digital identity, so mostly relevant on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, but quite large, so it affects quite a lot of people, so might have ramifications globally. Uh, relevant standards for it, by way, are managed by Etsy. So it's actually very nice that, as uh, uh, Paul mentioned this morning, that there's a connection soon coming up between Etsy, CyberQSC, and the Etsy group that uh, uh, looks into these things. Um, also, nice part is that if you want to use some software to digitally sign a document and, and have it, say, uh, readable uh, in a PDF form, uh, there's a free and open source software, which is sort of sponsored by the European Commission and published by the European Commission. And of course, in classical form, so no quantum safe cryptography involved. And the reason why we focus on, on this instead of, say, TLS, uh, well, it's, uh, it's the double. Uh, first of all, we feel like this is a sector which is, or an application of PKIs, which is much, much less studied than TLS. So if you said TLS, it's a very crowded arena. It was for us also a bit unclear where exactly we could contribute, what could we do that other people are not already doing. Um, so this is like a much less studied problem, so there seems to be much less attention and also much less progress in transitioning to a quantum safe variant. Uh, also notice that there is some overlap between the two, say for instance use the same certificate format, uh, but the challenges are quite different in this migration. And also a more safe practical for us, and less interesting for you, but I want to mention it here, uh, this is also relevant to pretty much all consortium partners, so all of them can contribute to this. Okay, um, I'm now gonna give you some more details, but not too many because indeed, uh, I mean, I'm staying a little bit high over, um, on the programs for the different tracks we have. And I'm gonna start with the policy and management track. Um, so these are three main, sli main line of lines of work uh, so far. So one of them is the societal impact assessment. Um, now this was supposed to be the past and present of a project. 
uh, unfortunately, this report is soon to be finished and not quite finished yet, so I cannot yet present the results uh, of it. But if you stay tuned, that's hopefully in the coming weeks or months, you'll have this nice uh, societal impact assessment to be found on our website. Um, in terms of governance, of course, the first nice result is a paper published online on the challenges in the transition to quantum safe public infrastructure for the public sector. Now I have to say, so if you are an expert on uh, PKIs or, or post-quantum cryptography, probably many things of, uh, in here are gonna be more or less known already, but the goal of this paper is actually to bring the knowledge from the expert to people who make decisions. So I think it's actually a very nice first result to try to move outside of, say, technical uh, area to and to move this knowledge and to, and to turn into something that CEOs and people who make decisions can, uh, can understand and act upon. And another part which is very interesting is uh, the creation of a serious game, so actually a video game, uh, but meant to raise awareness and let people understand what exactly they can do and should do in a transition to quantum safe PKIs. Now this track started a little bit later, um, so for now we mostly require, uh, gather the requirements and the goals of, uh, of such a serious game, and we're now moving to the next phases of conceptual development and then eventually development of it. Then, for the cryptographic track, and here I hope I'm gonna give something which is also interesting for people who wanted some details and some cool math and stuff, even though it's gonna be mostly like, say, something to uh, get our attention and then uh, you have to look for uh, the details uh, online. Um, so again, we're focusing on cryptographic combiners. Um, and brief word for, the, uh, for those of you who don't know them, well, the idea of a combiner is that you take several cryptographic schemes that do the same thing, say, several uh, digital signature schemes, and you combine them into one, which performs the same things, which, uh, which does the same thing, with the property that, at least, uh, that the scheme is secure if at least one of the components is secure. And so far, well, all good. That's what we actually want in general from a hybrid scheme. Um, <coughs> notice that this actually turns out to be quite tricky, especially if you look at CAM combiners, so combiners for CAM, um, because there's often no security in the quantum random oracle model. So in terms of cryptographic research, of course, quite uh, some work that can be done there into proving that these schemes are secured. And the first nice result, well, we also have more, but I want to mention one in here. Uh, well, so it's a generic construction, uh, so if you want, if you're into cryptography and math, you can read the first ten sentence, otherwise you might skip to the second one. Um, but we already have, say, a first technique to prove that a particular construction of can combiners from a particular class of pseudorandom function, not any pseudorandom function, is secure in the quantum accessible random oracle model. I'm linking here the ePrint, but it's also published online. Uh, won't be able to say much more about that uh, because I also want to talk about other things, and namely the progress of a technical track. Uh, so this is a part which is probably most interesting uh, to all of you, uh, but here also comes the second reason why I'm not going to be able to s give a lot of details compared to previous presentation on this. Namely, the first proof of concept we deliver is only due at the end of the year, so we don't have it yet. Uh, we're on track uh, for that, but we're not high ahead of track. So I cannot yet pr uh, show you like super nice results, tables and numbers. For that, you'll have to wait a little bit. Um, but I could already give some first preliminary observations. Uh, so recall, we're working, you are focusing here on um, PKIs to manage digital signings of documents, so not TLS. And already some first observation. Well, the first point, um, so this sort of like changes um, so I think it was pretty much correct when I wrote it. Now it's sort of like, it is to be nuanced and it might be incorrect in a few months. But let's say, so if we look at hybrid certificates, uh, at least in some forms, uh, these have been around for a while, actually more than three years. I think it's now approaching four years. Uh, but the situation, if you want to use them, uh, is evolving a little bit. So also depending on the ITF hackathons, you might be able to find something uh, in your favorite tool or not, but say it's a very fastly evolving uh, situation. So it's, uh, it's not that you can go there and, it's every and everything is documented and you can use it and you can go forth. You need to figure out what exactly is there and what you can use. Um, second observation is that, well, um, I'm also gonna talk about crypto agility uh, today. Um, well, I don't have a formal definition for crypto agility, but I will say probably if we look at the software which is used for to sign a document, uh, that I would then call crypto agile. Um, and the problem here is not really that you, um, the problem here is not changing um, the cryptography schemes that you're using, but the fact that you need to substitute one scheme with two if you want to do a hybrid approach. So say, but this is also an aspect which, in my opinion, is quite important from crypto agility, is that if you're looking at the hybrid, that doesn't only mean substituting one component, but potentially expanding the number of components, which can be tricky depending on uh, exactly how that's done. 
And last but not least, uh, this is also a part that we're now more actively working upon. Um, in terms of standards, uh, this is still quite, uh, not much has been done yet. So things are starting only now, so it's going much more slowly than, say, TLS. Um, but luckily things are in motion, but I guess just like for any other important protocols, input for everybody involved in these topics is important. So this is sort of like call to action to gather efforts in the topic. Okay, I'm gonna get to the uh, second part uh, of my presentation, which is actually quite short. I think I even have some time, so I can even slow down. Nice for me, more breathing. Uh, which is the future of Akpilo. So uh, again, it's a five-year project. We are now one and a half years uh, through the project, so we have still quite some time to go. Uh, so let's look forward at what we're planning to do in the short and then in the medium to long term. First, the short term, so this year. Uh, well, what I sort of like promised, um, I'm sorry, in the previous slides, uh, well, a first proof of concept. So something like showing something nice that you can then can be used and uh, where we can give numbers on performance and on compatibility and so forth. Uh, that's due at the end of the year. Um, part two, something else which I promised in the slides, the societal impact at assessment. And the nice part, we also plan to release a video about it. So they can be shared not only as a long like paper or, or a study you need to, uh, that you need to read, but it was in a say, relatively short video, easier to uh, disseminate and uh, you know, hopefully to raise engagement about it. Uh, more on that requirements analysis in terms of performance, uh, for instance, of hybrid PKIs, and a report uh, describing more details and giving a, a, a more complete overview on quantum safe cryptographic combiners. So only gave like the definition of them and one result on cryptographic combiners, but we plan to publish say, uh, an overall study detailing what exactly is going on there, where you need to pay attention, say what is the current situation of quantum safe uh, cryptographic combiners. And then looking a little bit beyond, so say 2024 and going on, 2025 and 26. Um, well, first of all, we're not going to stop with one uh, proof of concept. We want to go ahead. And also, so we're not focusing on uh, PKIs for signing of documents, say signing of PDFs. Um, we don't want to stop there. Uh, so that's the first use case. Hopefully, we'll be able to deliver nice results in there and engage in a nice conversation. But we would like to move a little bit beyond and also impact other areas. Where exactly, we still don't know, but hopefully we'll be able to have a broader impact than only document signing. Uh, something else which I teased about in previous slides is uh, this awareness creation game or serious game. Again, uh, we're now uh, most rounding up the process of gathering the requirements and goals for such a game, but then eventually we aim to publish it and uh, to ensure that people can use it. And what's more, a massive open online course on the topic, a self-assessment tool for organization to understand exactly how are they exposed to the problem, what they can do about it, uh, do we need to delegate it to vendors or can we do something ourselves or do we need to do something themselves? And finally, enrich the website. So indeed, we have a website to keep track of what we're doing and to stay in touch with us. But right now, it's a little bit more than a placeholder, which is a bit sad, but we hope to actually make it into something nice and a bit more usable in the future. And in particular, here, an important topic. Um, so all the results that we're, um, uh, that we're producing are going to be public as per uh, project proposal. So that's really on the contract, uh, black and white. Um, and so uh, hopefully on this website, there will be the interface where you can find all of the results that have been uh, published in the project so far. That being said, I think that was the end of my presentation. And again, don't forget the E at the end of my name if you want to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Gabriel. So. Also good. Uh, <laughs> um, again, thank you. Again, I'm 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 surprised by all the information today, and um, it was so valuable seeing your input and everything that the uh, that you're doing with this project and the, the partners with that. So, um, looking in the chat room or online do we have any questions here in the room is there are there any questions for gabriel no well that is in the in the afternoon i think everyone gets a bit a little bit tired yeah and, and but let's see maybe if we're getting on stage for the panel discussion um we might get some really interesting topics about